Alan Wonderworld has been nothing short of flashy since it was first shown to us at the Xbox Series X Game Showcase livestream in 2020. Does Balan Wonderworld deliver a gorgeous stage play 3D platforming experience? Or is this game all flair and no substance? <laughs> Find out in our review. Hey folks, if you enjoy the review, hit that subscribe, like, and notification button. It's three small clicks for you, but means the world to us. Thanks for watching. Here's what I know about Balan Wonderworld's narrative. You take the role of either a boy or girl. You can play one in solo or both in co-op play who are dissatisfied with their lives for some reason, and so they find their way to a mysterious theater run by an equally mysterious Balan. Balan is a seemingly magical showman who takes them into the fantasy realm of Wonderworld to find their hearts with the help of fluffy bird creatures known as Tims. This apparently involves traveling to the fantastical dream worlds of various people and helping them through tragic events, most of whom you only meet or learn about when you reach the end of their worlds. There's also a villainous counterpart to Balan, known as Lance, that harnesses the sadness of people and gives it monstrous form. And so you act on behalf of Balan to fight off their corruption and bring hope back to them. And then you do a victory dance with them for some reason. Along the way, you collect more and more of those aforementioned bird-like Tims, feed them with jewels you find in levels, and watch them as they play on contraptions that progress a number counter until it reaches a certain milestone. At that point, it awards you and the Tims with even more elaborate contraptions for them to play on. All of this is apparently towards your character restoring their own happiness or something. To be honest, more than 75% of this is presumption on my part, because this game tells you next to nothing for most of the experience. Who are these people? I'm not quite sure. Why do I only find out about them briefly at the end of their chapters? I'm not sure either. What's the point of the Tims having bigger rides to play on? I don't know. Why is Balan helping me and why is this the way he's going about it? You get the idea. But at least it all looks very flashy and amusing, I guess. <laughs> Balan Wonderworld is nothing if not stylish. The Tims are cute, their contraptions look amusing, the worlds you explore are thoroughly different and visually fantastic. Meanwhile, the music that pervades the game is a bona fide keeper of a soundtrack. I'd listen to it whether I was playing Battle Wonderworld or not. I remember playing the preview and thinking, dang. I can't wait to see how they explain what's going on with all this crazy interesting stuff. Well, I'd be lying if I said I know a lot more now than I did then. Yahoo? Hmm. So at its core, Balan Wonderworld is very, very simple. Every face button performs the function of whatever form you're in. At the most basic form, it's a jump. But it isn't long before you start discovering different costumes for your character that adds abilities to what you can do overall. There are numerous costumes throughout the game, and you can hold three to switch between them at any given time. Some just provide traversal and utility, like the ability to hover a bit longer on a jump, or breathe fireballs. Some are uniquely niche and provide traversal in otherwise impassable scenarios, like a spider costume on webs, or a gear costume operating switches that opens up paths in the environment. And then some are just downright redundant, or too unwieldy for their own good, like the multiple costumes that utilize tornado elements, or the box fox ability that uncontrollably changes you into a sliding cube to which you can't change back or control anything for a moment.
Early levels are full of obstacles that can't be handled without later costumes, providing some replayability. And finding those costumes is a fun aha moment. What's less fun is that you don't just have those costumes to keep. You store them like stocks in your collection, and if you get hit or fall to your doom, you lose a stock of your equipped costume. If you lose all stocks of the costume, then you no longer have access to it or its abilities, and have to go back to the level it was in to collect more stocks. But don't worry, you can just stand around waiting for stocks of the same costume to respawn where you found it, with keys to unlock it that are always like 15 feet away at most. It's all just an obnoxious anchor weighing down the most semblances of fun the costume system might have provided. And speaking of obnoxious, if you're wondering about what might hit you, Balan Wonderworld throws enemies at you at various junctures of the game. Usually, you'll know when you're entering a wide open arena-like area that minions are about to spawn and fight you. These enemies take on the form of shadowy creatures that range from small flailing goo balls and fish to pelicans and beetles with spiky shields that charge you, all usually based on the theme of the level. And none of them are that fun to fight. They die with a jump on the head or a hit from an attack ability and you go about your business, unless you wait around too long. Then they respawn and you have to fight them again, over and over till you flee the scene where they appear. There are bosses and these are about as inspired as fights get. Generally, the bosses actually require you to utilize the chapter's costumes and abilities to beat them, like reflecting tornadoes back in a tornado flinging foe, or locking on and dive kicking one boss's nose. That said, even these boss fights boil down to jumping on or attacking a weak spot when they present it to you. Add to this that there are balanced statues and hats hidden throughout each level. The statues are necessary to collect so you can move forward to new chapters and worlds. The hat serve as mini-games in which you must play a short flashy rhythm game with Balan, in which he flies through some empty space, destroys some junk, and multiplies with gems you've been collecting to feed the Tims if you do well. It adds a bit more variety and replayability to the levels to find these statues and hats, but all of it is as much without context or sense as the story, so I could only care so much. The finished state of Balan Wonderworld is disappointing to say the least. For all of its style, I was really interested to see how they were going to expand upon the preview. The aesthetic and characters are there, the music is captivating, the level design made me want to explore and experiment where I could, and the abilities mostly gave me options to do so. However, these are held down by a lot of contrivances, and outright holes in either functionality or context. The final release of Balan Wonderworld felt like a rush job where good ideas, visuals, and sounds were forced to dance among either unfinished or unfun nonsense. It can be seen in its worst extent in an epilepsy-triggering glitch that had to be patched out of the game on day one. It would be cool if many of the aspects of Balan Wonderworld were given new life in a better form someday. But for all of its pizzazz, this is one show I find upsettingly hard to recommend as is. Hey folks, if you enjoyed the review, click that subscribe, like, notification button. It's three small clicks for you, but it means the world to us. For more video reviews and everything else gaming related, you're already in the right place. You're on ShackNews.com.